We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for ya. In this video, I'm going to take you through the final step of painting the Scar Queen of the Broken Coast model. And that is by painting her base. As always, if you have suggestions for what you'd like to see in future how-to videos, please leave them down below in the comments. Alright, so we are going to paint this pirate ship to look a little bit like driftwood. I want it to be kind of pale and weathered. The first color we're going to use is going to be Gorthar Brown. I like this brown because it's got a little bit of gray to it, so it's going to work well with our kind of light, desaturated driftwood look that we're going for. Now I'm going to apply this to the base just using a very rough dry brush. I obviously want to make sure that I don't get any slops onto the mini since she's already been painted, but I'm not necessarily concerned with making sure that the coat gets on too evenly or anything like that. Um, the roughness of it is going to kind of add to the look that we want. We want a very weathered, uneven looking color for this base. Here you can see the pirate ship after the dry brush has been completed. I'll show you both sides. I got good coverage while still leaving a little bit of black in some of the recesses and that's kind of what the dry brushing got me. It was a, a little bit of a shadowed effect. Our next color is going to be Bane Blade Brown. I'm also going to apply this using a dry brush. However, I'm going to be a little bit neater about this one and a little bit more selective. My goal here is really to catch the top ridges of everything, which is what a dry brushing process really excels at. So here's the base after the Bane Blade Brown has been applied to it. I'm going to add one more dry brush to really give it a bleached effect and we're going to use Ushapti Bone for that. And I'm kind of just applying this to the large spaces to break up the color a little bit. And since this paint is so bright, it's really going to give it that sun bleached weathered look that I'm kind of going for here. Next we're going to paint the metal sections of this ship. We're going to start using Lead Belcher. And then we're going to apply this as an all over layer to these metal strips that stabilize the ship. I actually looked for the exact term of what they were and I couldn't find it. So leave that in the comments down below too if you happen to know what the technical term is for these. There's one metal strip that goes around the entire front of the ship and then there's two on this bowsprit right underneath her feet. Once we have the metal painted, we're going to add a little bit of weathering and we're just going to paint some Fugan Orange onto the metal sections. We're not doing this as an all over layer, we're mostly concentrating on the area around the rivets and kind of dabbing it on there. After we've weathered the metal, we're going to go ahead and start adding some different weathering colors into the wood. Our first is going to be Nurgling Green and I'm going to mix this with quite a bit of Lamian Medium in order to make a kind of wash. This is probably about 70% medium, 30% paint, and I'm just going to add it to a few areas to kind of give it a little bit of a weathered look. You know how driftwood can kind of have a mottled color to it from the different ways that the water interacts with the wood. I'm not adding this very heavily. I kind of just want it to tint a few areas. And I'm not necessarily putting this anywhere um, in any kind of particular pattern other than just where I think it looks good. It's not really that much of a difference from what we've got on the model already, but it does add a little bit of a green tint to the areas that I'm applying it to. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of Nihilax Oxide to the wood. Now I'm not using any sort of medium to thin it out, however I am painting this with a very wet brush. And I'm kind of dabbing a little bit in, wiping my brush off, and then blending it. Now I'm going to be applying this color to both the metal and the wood. It's going to kind of create a hard water stain looking effect. Now that I've got the wood painted, I really want this to look like it's coming up out of the water. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the blank areas around the ship. We're going to start with Sotek Green. I mixed it with a little bit of Lamian Medium and then I'm going to apply this as an all over layer on these blank areas around the base. 
Once we have Sotek Green on the base, I'm going to apply a little bit of Gulliman Blue Glaze. I'm going to apply this on the entirety of the Sotek Green, but really concentrate it on the areas around the ship and around the very edge lip of the base. I'm going to darken the blue a little bit further by adding some Drakenhof Nightshade. I'm just concentrating this in a few areas to kind of create a modeled movement to the water. Now I need to let these glazes dry entirely before I do this next step. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Woodland Scenics water effects. This stuff acts a lot like Elmer's glue. However, it dries completely clear and it's going to really look like water on the base. So I'm going to put a glop of it on my palette. And then I'm going to use an old glue brush to glop this onto the base. I want to make sure that I apply it thickly to all the areas of water that I just painted blue. But I want to make sure that I also get the boat itself so that it looks like the boat is wet because it's just come out of the ocean. I also want to make sure that as I apply it, I'm not applying it completely smooth. I want to have a few ridges and spikes and movement so it looks like the water is splashing. Once I've got all the water effects applied, I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to make sure that I wipe off the ring of the base so that it's a flat surface around the ring. And then I'm going to set this aside and let it dry completely. Um, since it's been applied so thickly to some areas, it's going to take at least 24 hours till it, everything becomes clear. Here's the base. Once the water is mostly dry, it's still a little bit cloudy in the very center. But you can see how it looks wet on the ship and it looks like there's waves crashing up and it adds a very interesting effect. Now that the water's dry, we're going to do a solid ring in Abaddon Black around the base. I put a little bit of Lay Me in Medium into the paint just to make it a little bit more workable. And then I'm just going to drag a nice thick brush across the rim and get a nice flat color around the entire outside. Also, since it's a privateer press model, I want to make sure that I add a few little lines to delineate the arc of the model. And we're going to do those in white just to make sure that they really stand out from the black rim. Now, I discovered long ago that I am no good at freehanding the arc of these models. So here is my little workaround. I, um, take a piece of blank paper and I put it underneath the model and I make sure that the line of the paper cuts the base in half. It's a lot easier for me to make sure that I get both of the lines straight across the model if I use a little bit of a reference. So I've lined the paper up so that it is parallel to her shoulders and then I'm going to take just a little bit of white paint and make a dot on each side where the paper meets the base. Once I have that dot as a reference, I'm going to use it to paint a thick white line all the way down the rim. And here is the scar model completely finished. I'll give her a bit of a twirl so you can see her. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos, I have another one where I take you through doing the green glow on her sword and the backpack in the mini wargaming vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't have a vault membership, go ahead and click the link. You can sign up for a 7 day free trial and get access to my tutorial as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial, and happy wargaming.